Okay. So I'd like to welcome all the participants to our uh, event this morning. Uh, this is part of the Two Rivers Festival. Uh, and it celebrates and appreciates the Speed and Aramasa River. And we want to thank uh, Trout Unlimited for being so flexible to do this amazing event uh, on screen instead of in place. It would be a beautiful day, unfortunately. <laughs> Here we are sitting by our desk watching a computer. Uh, our festival is all organized by volunteers and involves uh, some 39 community organizations. So we ask that you support the organizations whose, whose logos you see on the screen. Um, they uh, do their good work also through volunteers. So they need members and we encourage you to contact them. And Evan will tell you a bit about his organization in a minute. And please also support uh, our festival sponsors and advertisers, they've made it possible for us to keep on doing this in this uh, odd time. Uh, the Guelph Outdoor School is our, is our main sponsor, our event sponsor, and uh, we ask you to, uh, there goes my slideshow, to, to uh, also um, support them as well. Uh, so it's a project of the Wellington Water Watchers. I've lost my screen. Can you still see me? I can, yes. yes. Here I am. Okay. I've lost the slides, but that's okay. Project of the Wellington Water Watchers, whose, um, whose mission is to save our waters and also uh, highlight any threats to them. So we'd ask you to support them as well. Uh, so I'd, now I'd like to invite Evan Kenna from Trout Unlimited the Speed Valley chapter to talk to you about uh, whatever floats your boat. So we're going to build a biodegradable boat, race it down a stream, uh, hopefully <laughs> the Marden Creek, all on the screen in your computer. <laughs> so here we go, Evan, over to you. Perfect. Well, thank you, Suzanne. And I'd like to first thank you and the Two Rivers Festival for um, allowing Trout Unlimited to be participating in the Two Rivers Festival again for the second year in a row. Um, so my name is Evan Kenna. I'm an executive member and a community volunteer for Trout Unlimited Canada. And we are a <clears throat> nonprofit organization that conserve, protect and restore Canada's freshwater ecosystems and their cold water resources for current, <clears throat> so, excuse me, current and future generations. Uh, so we operate within the Speed Valley and today our event is called Whatever Floats Your Boat. Um, so we are going to be building a biodegradable boat out of an old egg carton. And as you see, I have a vertical top-down view that I will be building it over. And there you have it. There's your biodegradable boat. So what this is, is an egg carton boat made from the bottom and a sail. And now you can go with your family and float this down the river. So that is the construction of the boat. Um, and again, this is just a starting point. You can go out with your family and anything that floats is technically a boat. So we encourage you to use natural um, found objects, um, little pieces of bark that you find on the ground, even a twig down the, down the water is great. But make sure if you go out into the waterways, clean up everything that you bring out. We do not want any leftover mess and that's why we're using biodegradable if for some reason you can't retrieve it it should over time degrade and not harm the natural environment the whole reason why we're doing this is to encourage the community to get out into our waterways enjoy our natural beauty of guelph and just to go and explore and have fun and we're hoping that once quarantine ends you guys can go out and race your boats with your friends and your family and make sure you tag the Two Rivers Festival and Trout Unlimited Canada. Send us in your, your boats. We wanna see what you guys have been up to. We would love to hear back from you and see what you've made and how fast they go and just go out and enjoy yourself. So that is my section on the boat building. So now I'm gonna switch over. Oh, thank you. So now I'm gonna switch over into the um, fish heads video. 
So I'm going to uh, share my screen. Let's go here. Perfect. Um, so this is Leo's Fish Heads, Bring Back the Brookies. This was filmed in uh, Hamlin Creek in Guelph. Hamlin Creek is um, within the off-leash leash dog park at Hamlin and um, at the Hamlin, I, I, I'm forgetting, forgetting the name right now, but it's an off-leash dog park next to the Hamlin Creek. This is the TVO Kids website. This is a full series. We encourage you to get out and watch, watch them all. But this is the one that was uh, filmed with the help of TVO Kids in Hanlon Creek. So I'm going to share this now. We are the Fish Heads Explorer Club. Sayat, Christian, and me, Leo. Together, we're getting wet and mucky, working with experts and helping our aquatic friends. Each day, we're on a new mission, exploring what's going on along the shorelines and under the waves. Splish, splash, grab your boots, and you can be a fish head, too. Fishes! Bring back the brookies. Bring back the brookies! Brook trout, also known as brookies, are at the top of our fish finder list today. We've already lost over 80% of these beauties. People have adapted to pollution, but brook trout have not. The brookies need clear, cold water straight from the earth to thrive and survive. But not fish heads. Today, Christian and Syat are helping a conservation team from Trout Unlimited Canada to study brookies up close and help reestablish their fragile creek home. Bring back the brookies! Bring back the brookies! Okay, SWAT team, we're going to be building our sediment mats here today. As you can see, we already have our Christmas trees in place. What does SWAT mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. SWAT stands for the Strategic Watershed Action Team. So we're going to make a lot of beneficial difference in the creek today. Great. Which is at your service. So as you can see, the Christmas trees are taking up a lot of space in the creek. They're helping to narrow the creek, which is really important because it helps to deepen it and drop the temperatures, which, as we know, for brook trout are really important. That's great, because if the water gets too warm, it can be deadly. We don't want that to happen. We certainly don't. And the second reason why we build sediment mats, through this section in particular, is we want to re-expose the material that trout need to spawn or lay their eggs. <laughs> so we don't want the really fine stuff. We want the larger cobble and gravel for brook trout to spawn. That's awesome. Let's get to work. Let's do it. We're going to use our wooden stakes and we'll use a mallet such as this, and we're gonna try and mallet or hammer them into the ground so that they don't flow away. All right, so aim for the top there. Yeah, Good nice job, work. This is so hard. You're doing great work. Smart move, fish heads. Using your sunglasses as safety glasses. Safe is smart, and smart is safe. It's the fish head's way. That's good. That looks great. Nice work. Christian, you're going to help me make a spider's web out of twine to make sure everything stays in place, right? Like a net. Like a net? Exactly. So how does this build up the riverbank? When we build our sediment mat, the water will actually flow over top of these Christmas trees. And you see how there are lots of branches and needles? Yeah, that's great because it slows down the water and the water, when it slows down, all the tiny little bits of dust and sand and dirt fall out and eventually this will become its own bank. You'll see grass and trees and flowers growing here one day too. Wow, nature rebuilding nature. It's pretty cool, I agree. So yep, make sure it's down at the bottom and it's nice and tight. Yeah. Right, that's great. Oh my goodness, great work, Christian. Thanks. The sediment mat looks wonderful. I'm gonna now ask you to go join my friend Kelly, who's another biologist, and you two are gonna go process some fish. How's that sound? That sounds awesome. Great. Okay, Zayat, you and I are gonna go electrofishing and we're gonna go looking for brook trout. Is that okay? 
Super cool. All right. And so this in front of me is the main part of the action today. This is our electro fishing unit. How does the electro fishing work? So this large black rectangle down here, that's our battery, that's our power source. And the power flows from the battery through our anode, which looks like a halo. And then we have our cathode, which is at the back. And between the two, an electrical pulse is sent. And we put that electrical pulse into the water to temporarily stun the fish. Good question. So would you like to try it on to see how it feels? Let's get this on you. Are you ready? Yep, like a backpack. One, two, three. All right. I'm going to give you the full weight. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here you go. Whoa, that's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like a Ghostbuster. You kind of look like one, too. <laughs> Ghostbusters. There you go. Now you'll really look ready. <laughs> Let's go electro fishing. I love your enthusiasm. First, we're going to get in the water and make sure there are no leaks in our gloves, in our waders, to make sure we're safe. Awesome. <laughs> Safety check. Christian and Syed know how to pay close attention to the safety instructions from the expert when working around the water. They always have their PFD on, rubber boots or chest waders. But the most important thing to bring on any fish heads mission is an adult. Having an adult close by is a must for safe adventures. Besides, you just might inspire them to take better care of us fish too. I'm glad I brought my sunglasses. Me too. Our polarized sunglasses are an important piece of our equipment. They help us see any rocks or tripping hazards that we might come across. They also help us see the fish when we're fishing. And last but not least, they make us look pretty cool. You ready? Yeah. Now we're going to go find some brook trout for Christian and Kelly to process. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Leah, can you turn my power on? Yep. Power on? Power on. Shocking. Nothing yet. Shocking. Nobody home. Move slow and steady. Shocking. There, yeah, 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 you got it. Oh, that's a brookie. It's a brookie. Hey, get in there. There, yes, I got it. Oh my God, good job. Wow, the color is so beautiful. I can see why they're also named Gaggle Trout. Definitely. Christian, hey, be careful with these beauties. Don't worry, Sayet, I got them. I hope so. <laughs> Kelly, we got a couple brookies to process. Awesome, Christian. Let's take a look. All right, so we put his face right towards at the end of the measuring board. We're going to measure total length. Oh, looks like he's about 18 centimeters. Yeah, it's actually the 18.4 there. Fork length is the indent of the tail, and that's about 17.8. This brook trout, also known as speckled trout, brookie, and square tail, is one of this season's top swimmers. <laughs> Their tail is nearly square, which helps them swim so well. Their favorite food includes aquatic insects, worms, leeches, spiders, and even frogs. We'll try and grab it by the face. Wow, that's cold water. It is cold water. Brooke, I love cold water. Looks like he's around 14 centimeters. There we go. And his fork length is about 13.8. Good job. Got two big ones today. Wow. <laughs> so will they grow any bigger? Brook trout do get bigger, but in this creek, they pretty much stay around that size. Time to go, rookie friends. Oh, man, already? Oh, well, I guess we'll have to say goodbye. Who wants to say goodbye first? Me. Okay, Christian. All right, reach in there and let him go. Bye. There he goes. Bye. Bye. All right, Tayette, your turn. There to go. Bye. 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 I 
know it's kind of sad we already said goodbye to our friends, but it's great that we at least found two of them here, especially considering that we were only fishing for a small amount of time. And in an urban area like Guelph, that's even more important because there's so much development around, but these guys are still healthy here. So we want to keep working to improve their habitat. Syed, Christian, thank you both so much for your help today. Great work. Fishers are always at your service. All the work that we're doing here today is to benefit brook trout, but in fact, it helps people too. People in this area get their drinking water from groundwater. So when we help the brookies, we help ourselves too? You got it. If that doesn't deserve a fish head's handshake, I don't know what does. What's a fish head's handshake? It's like this, okay? Yes. Fish heads. Now let's try one. Okay. Working up the stream. I like <laughs> it. For both of your work today, I have just a little something small for both of you. I hope that's all right, so that you can remember your help with the brook trout. Oh, wow. wow! Thank I you. Have two for you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi Finn. Hi Finn. <laughs> nice work. Hey Alex, I've got a song that your organization can use to promote your great work. Want to hear it? Yes, please. Went to the creek with Christian just the other day to net some rich to make sure the fun is okay. Playing nets, wing deflectors is how we roll. Now the water's cooling more control. Bring back the rookies is what? Say, keep the water clean so they never go away. Oh, that was amazing. You know, Syat isn't the only one who can beatbox. Bring back the brookies, I bring back the brookies, I bring back the Oh, sorry. Let me clean that up. Wonderful. Okay. There was bring back the brookies. Um, Great video. As you saw, there's a lot of great information there, and that was shot at Hamlin Creek. Um, so now we are going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, head over to the, oh, my apologies, head over to my PowerPoint slide that we have, a little, little bit of information on our organization. Okay, here we go. Okay, Trout Unlimited Canada. So we are the Speed Valley chapter. Um, as I mentioned before, we're a nonprofit um, and we operate within the Speed Valley watershed. Um, we're all community volunteers. We have a, a diverse group of individuals who come out and um, work on the executive board. So the purpose of our chapter, um, we work within this map confines, as you can see, I hope you can see my uh, mouse here. So this would be Guelph Lake. Hanlon Creek is in this area here, and we also work on Marden Creek, which is up in this area. So um, Marden and Hanlon are where we are concentrating um, a lot of our efforts at the moment. Um, so what we do is we go out in the streams and we uh, do some bank rebuilding, we do fish monitoring. So we're trying to make sure that brook trout are healthy and happy and in the streams because brook trout are canary in the coal mine species. That means that if they're there, it is a good indication that the waterways are healthy um, because they need a very specific range of an ecosystem to th survive and thrive. Um, so this is what we were doing. Um, this was a few years back. So as you can see, there is some difference between, oh, my apologies. So this was before, this is what we did with our work afterwards. So we were able to reconnect Martin Creek to the Speed River, and this is after it was renaturalized. So that was some good work that we've done quite a few years back, um, 2010. So our current projects are, we're working on Martin Creek, um, we made a wing deflector and we're just trying to narrow the channel and deepen it, make sure that the um, river is healthy for brook trout. Um, sediment traps. As you can see, there's a bunch of our volunteers and we use um, donated Christmas trees 
to use within the river. As you're seeing in the fish heads video, we always use natural, um, natural products to make sure that there's nothing, nothing toxic in the water. All these Christmas trees entwine in case anything happens, it won't, it won't damage the waterway. Um, so this is the current project. As you can see on the, on the right hand side, there is, this is the sediment trap that we used and it really narrowed the channel. Um, water temperature monitorings. Um, we're at Martin Creek, Hanlon Creek, and the Aramasa in Osprange. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is a wing deflector. And what this is doing again is just trying to make sure that everything moves in the natural channel of the water and this is something that we would do on a Saturday we'd get a bunch of volunteers out we'd shoot out a call on our Facebook and Instagram and make sure that community volunteers are aware of what we're doing and we would go out and make this in uh, four four to five hours okay so as you saw in the video as well we electro fish and we're just trying to um, take in some statistics on the size of the trout, how many are there, and just to get a general sense of the health of the waterway. And again, we want to just help the creek form into its natural channel. So we just want to, we were trimming alder trees to create that wing deflector and help, you know, uh, we were helping the stream to become a little faster as we were doing this to, to clear up some debris. Um, as you can see, there's a, little, there's a little ping pong ball there at the end of the arrow on the left. And we were just seeing how the stream naturally wants to flow. And that kind of gives us an idea of where we need to build it. Um, luckily, we're very fortunate in Guelph to have the um, Ontario biologists located out of Guelph. So they do come out and give their expertise when they can and help us um, they, they help us assess the waterways and um, guide us in our efforts to uh, naturalize streams. Um, so yeah, the small water action team, we, um, in 2018, as you can see, 534 linear meters. Um, we built four, they built four structures um, and there was 90 volunteer hours. So they were coming, so the small water action team would go to chapters across Ontario and help out with specific projects that they weren't, that the chapters themselves didn't have the time to accomplish. So we were fortunate that they were able to um, work on Hanlon Creek in 2018. And this was accomplished in 2019 was the Hanlon Weir removal. If you do go to the Hanlon off-leash dog park, I'm sure you've noticed that there is, the, the weir has been removed. Um, this allows for trout to be able to move throughout the stream because it was impeding their movement and it is uh, lower water temperatures and the fish passageway. Um, okay, so now we're at the end of our slideshow. So if you would like to become a member, please go to tuccanada.org. Um, if you would like to donate their if you specify the Speed Valley chapter, half of your $40 donation for a membership will go directly to our chapter, which does help us out in our efforts to um, help the streams. And if you really want to get involved, you, like myself, you can join our executive team. We meet usually bi-monthly. Right now, due to COVID, we have a little bit of slowdown because we cannot meet in person. However, we are trying to make sure that tw the 2020 season is continuing as normal and trying to get some projects underway. And for all you parents out there who've stuck with us, um, we have a community fundraiser that we've joined with Royal City um, who are going to be launching a square tail pale ale in July <laughs> of 2020. Um, we launched this beer last year with great success. Again, 50 cents from every can sold goes directly to our chapter. And it's just a great event to get out. Also support Royal City Brewery. They're wonderful collaborators and we're very fortunate to have them on, on our team.
So again, here you are. This is all of our um, social media. Um, please feel free to join us. And that is the end of my slideshow. So thank you. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Okay. So I have a question. Of course. I live um, on Water Street down near the Hanlon. Yes. So between Edinburgh and the Hanlon, there are two weirs. And then mm -hmm. there's another weir up just further between Edinburgh and Gordon. Okay. So it's always been an ongoing argument, mm -hmm. <coughs> I should say discussion, about removing those weirs. <clears throat> and then the big discussion, removing the big uh, John McRae Dam. Right. Uh, can, I'm a heritage advocate in my other life. So <laughs> the dam is part of Guelph heritage in a way. And of course, for the boating on the pond that it formed. So can yes. you comment on all of that? Because it's when I do walking tours, it's mm -hmm. always a discussion. And I wondered what your or you and your organization uh, are considering doing anything about that, like the Martin Creek, or no? Um, we haven't had that discussion as an organization. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, for TUC as a whole, we are trying to reconnect Canada as one of our projects where we want to we want to make sure that all the weirs are removed that are impeding fish um, movement. However, as an organization within Guelph, we have not discussed those specific weirs of yet. Um, we do want to continue with weir removal as we move forward as an organization, but um, those specific weirs we have not uh, spoken about yet, but I appreciate you bringing those up. So what, would, what do they do in the river? They're really their only scenic, but do they okay. heat up the water or? Yeah, the so, three weirs. You know the ones I mean, the concrete. Yeah, I know. I know which ones you're talking about. So I don't know historically what the purpose of a weir was. I'm sure it was probably to slow water down and to allow um, just a slow, like a slower river. I'm sure at one point it was very fast moving. That's called the speed river <laughs> for a reason. Um, so. The, the weir, if there's a great video on YouTube that actually shows the damage that a weir does to the base of the water. Um, okay. if, you can, if you can imagine my hand as a weir and when water comes over and drops off the side of the weir, it becomes very fast. And yeah. that actually starts making a rut in the sediment at the base of the weir and it washes the sediment away, which we need for fish as okay. well on the high on the up river side of a weir it starts actually packing sediment against that section yeah. um, so it's not great for the um, sediment of the river as well as for the the movement the free movement of trout because they would have to jump over top of it and i i don't believe there's fish ladders <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if there is fish ladders there but um Historically, I'm not sure why they would have put it in, but I, that is something that I, I am interested now to go and seek out the answer for that. So thank you, Suzanne. And, and we thought that uh, there was a rumor that the city was, was going to take them out because okay. they are crumbling, the concrete was crumbling. But a couple of years ago, they came in and repaired one of them. Oh, so new okay. concrete, so it's back the way it was. Okay. So, so I do know what the city's position is uh, in terms of taking them away. Yeah, that, that is interesting. Um, I've only been a member since 2018, so I'm not sure if we've ever been approached by the city or if we've ever had that conversation. However, that is something that um, is good to bring up, and I'm, I'm glad you did, and I'm sure that conversation will be had at some point in the future. Yeah, I thought of it when you talked about the Hanlon Creek weir removal. Yes, yeah, that is something that we, we are definitely concentrating on because we do want to make sure that we, we cool down the, the Hanlon Creek and allow just free movement of trout throughout because we, if you think of the off-leash dog park, walking into the dog park on the left-hand side above the weir, that's where we do a lot of our um, restoration work. Yeah. Uh, we put in a couple temperature loggers throughout just to see um, what the average temperature throughout the, the throughout the creek is like, and as well as as you saw in the video, we we do electrofishing to make sure that our work that we're doing is um, affecting in a positive way 
the health of the ecosystem. Um, because you need, you need strong banks and there are a lot of deer in there and deer come through and they trample the banks. And that's just, that's just natural, the ecosystem working as it works. Um, mm -hmm. But to allow that the banks don't get washed out, we do build up the banks to allow for a stronger section. That was actually one of my first um, volunteering within Trout Unlimited was I went to Hanlon Creek and we did some bank stabilization with trees. And I just, I just was enamored with the project <laughs> and I really enjoyed what um, Trout Unlimited stands for and what they want to do within the community and I really wanted to get involved. So I encourage anybody who's watching, um, get involved. And if you have a passion for the environment, come join TUC and even all throughout all these other um, great organizations within the Two Rivers Festival, we all have the common goal of just we want nature to be nature and to allow um, the least amount of impact from human life to affect our beautiful community because we do live in Guelph and it, I just, I just love our community. That's a wonderful way to end Evan. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I have granddaughters, so I'll teach them how to build the boat. Oh, when, wonderful. I, when I get to see them next and yes I was really I had a vision of you building a big boat for people to ride in <laughs> oh. <laughs> no none of that we're just use it's just a small little egg carton I just it's just a fun way you know and it is your eggs just yeah. get out and build build your little boat with the sail and I think it's just just a great great event so again is that thank you. your invention yeah it is my design <laughs> um it, it, last year when we had a few of the kids come out, they, they made some really interesting boats. Um, two kids were able to carry a hundred rocks down about a 50 foot wow. section of the river. And it was just all recycled cardboard and things that we were using. Um, we had one of the parents used all natural materials and it was a little floating um, bark boat. And it was just so, it was so much fun. So yeah. Once, yeah. once you can, if you go out in the river, just send us your videos. We'd love to see what everybody's up to, and we hope you're all safe and happy at home. Okay. Thanks so much, and thanks, Leah, for uh, joining us as well. And uh, thanks to everybody who watches the video later. It will be posted uh, after a few days, and you can sign in for it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Take care. All right. Bye.